So one of the things I wanted to do um, for some time has been to create a radio station. Well, why that? Why would I do that? Well, um, I want to do more live videos on YouTube, and I also want to be able to broadcast the audio out so that people can listen to it on their cell phones or, or wherever they might be. Um, so I'm going to work on that today, and I'm going to take you along with me as I set this up. Let's stick around. As you can see, I have IceCast up here on the screen that we're looking at. IceCast is free and open source uh, software, and it it allows me to take any kind of file, like an Og Vorbis or a Theora, an uh, Og Opus or a Web, WebM or an MP3, and then send that out across a stream. There's also Shoutcast, but Shoutcast is not open source. That's proprietary, and I believe they charge for the use of their streams. Now, I can go out to someplace like Linode, somewhere like that, set up the IceCast service, and that would be outside my network. Since that's the only thing that people are going to connect to, I would prefer that to be off-prem. The other concern I have is that there is a fixed number of users that each one of those IceCast servers can handle. And that depends on what's the uh, encoding rate. So the audio normally is encoded at 44.1 megahertz. There's also the, the bit depth. Usually it's 128 uh, kilobits, but you can go lower for vo voice audio. But if you have any music in there whatsoever, it's going to sound terrible <laughs> at the lower rates. IceCast is really the streaming portion of it. What about the management piece? Well, there's uh, another open source project that's called Liquid Soap. And Liquid Soap is a programming language, basically, to, that allows you to create streams. But not only does it let you create streams, it also lets you set up web radios. It allows for live shows. It customizes transitions between the shows. So you can have things scheduled at a certain time to occur. So it, and, and Liquid Soap will manage that. It, so if it gets to be, you say you have uh, you're going to start your show at, let's say, 2 p.m. At, at a, on, let's say, it's Eastern time. Then live, uh, Liquid Soap can be told that, hey, at 2 p.m. on a Friday, Eastern time, I want you to con stop broadcasting what you're sending, which could be just music, and switch over and start sending a different program. The second thing Liquid Audio can do is you can interrupt a stream. So I can have a, a, a service that is connected, like through IceCast. Liquid Soap, will, well, it won't interrupt a song that's playing. It'll wait until the end, create a transition, and then start sending your stream at that, at that given point in time. So uh, there is a way you can have it interrupt uh, a stream, or you can have it wait until the song is over. So like if it's some kind of a news broadcast where you need to interrupt uh, the, ex the existing program, you can do that. Liquid Soap doesn't have a user interface to it. It, it is strictly a, a language that you can use to specify, this is the type of, of input that I want to use, whether that's MP3, FLAC, Og Vorbis, uh, Og Opus. There's just... There's a whole raft of, of different uh, encoded streams that you can use. So, and then you can either output on Liquid Soap, you can either output to IceCast or Shoutcast. So if, you're, if you have a paid service and you prefer to use Shoutcast, you can do that. One of the other things that I'm obviously going to need here is if, let's say that the limit on the number of server on the on the number of streams that a server can handle, let's let's just pick a number at, at ten. So ten people on that server. Once I get to eleven, then I start degrading the the quality of the service on that particular server. Well, there's another thing called a relay, and so Liquid Soap understands about those two, 
And you can program it to say, once this server reaches a load of 10 users, I want you to start up a relay. What's a relay? A relay is basically taking a copy of the stream and, and starting up another 10 sessions, if you will. So let's say that they're all the same. So it allows me to scale up, allows me to scale up my load. You can also have things like emergency channels too. So uh, as say that the, uh, maybe the service that I'm using to host the IceCast server goes down, I can move it over. I can move it over to somebody else and have it, have it continue operating. So Liquid Soap understands things like failures, but it understands failures at a number of levels. One, maybe the file isn't readable or maybe it's missing that you're trying to send, uh, but yeah, or it can't connect to it. And rather than Liquid Soap diverting to dead air, it will immediately switch over to another format, another program. So yeah, you can do that. That And make sure that that one you know works. So yeah, that happens sometimes when you're switching. I don't want to have to be so low level that I'm dealing with the radio station at this level. Liquid Soap is great, but, and I have run it for a number of years without an overarching piece because there wasn't one. On top of it, we can run something called AzuraCast. And AzuraCast is another piece of open source software and it includes everything. AzuraCast includes um, the endpoint, it includes the IceCast, it, can, it, is, it will configure your radio station, it will configure liquid soap and run and operate liquid soap for you. And then it provides you with the UI that you need in order to configure your radio stations, set up your schedules, and allow your, um, your, your live broadcast to interrupt a, 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 a normal stream broadcast of music and news. And yeah, you can even insert jingles and all that and radio IDs and all that stuff too if you're broadcasting over the air. So it can be used for that as well. Um, so let's uh, let's go through the start. Let's go through the, the let's get it installed. It's pretty easy. It says I need four CPU cores, four gig of RAM, forty gig of disk, and a computer server capable of running Docker. So yeah, it says here that's enough for five to ten stations. Now this you can run this on. Ubuntu, Debian, Mac OS, and Windows. So one of the few times where you have software that is written across the board. So it doesn't, yeah, it is. And also there is a Raspberry Pi version of this on, on how to test the, the maximum number of connections that your server can handle. Okay, so let's see. Let me just do... Okay, so at this point, it, the first thing I have to do is create a station because without, without that, I don't even have a directory to set up anything in because this, this is your directory. So we're going to call this I can, this will be, if this, if this is sitting out in public, which this one won't be, uh, I could give this a website URL and then, yeah, and this is not sitting outside. So, uh, we'll, yeah, we could use UTC to do this. That's probably a good idea. Um, yeah, and then we'll leave all that other stuff default. This is the on-demand streaming, and this is what allows... Uh, Music from playlists with on-demand streaming enabled will be available to stream by a, a specialized public page. I'm not, I don't need that, so I'm just going to continue on with this, this. Okay.
If you have a need to store your playback history, uh, yeah, you can do that. Let's see if this won't take that. Oh, I guess I should change it to that, huh? Now I can see my uh, my stations here. If I if I uh, if I think if I open this up, I don't want to be in the administrator account right now. I'm just gonna back all the way out and go to the home page. There we go. So right now, my station is not up. Uh, there's no, it's offline. And there is, there is, uh, yeah, there's nothing there. We can, this is the public page where I can go to, to listen to what's going on. And then we can, we still have some setup we need to do. So yeah, it's, it's set up all of this stuff. So if I want to enable song requests, this is where you can say you can interrupt the stream. And this right now is not running. This is the broadcast service. And, and then the auto DJ service is currently shuffling nothing because there's no songs here. So what do we need to do? Well, or I can just do this, I guess. Okay, so I have brought up some songs here to at least have something to play. I'm going to have to specifically tell it to put them in there. Okay, now it's got them. 10 songs, 27 minutes. Okay, all good. So I can start my station now. And there we go. Now you won't be able to hear this, but I, I don't want to get into trouble <laughs> for broadcasting music. Uh, it's not, this is not broadcasting off of my prem. This is staying within my network. But you can see that, yeah, there's, um, you can see what's going on here. So if we go back to the profile of the station, you can see the song that's currently playing and the one that's coming up next. So we have effectively built a radio station right now. The next thing that I will want to do in the next video is to get this hooked up so that I am able to stream to this and that way I can send my broadcast over to this system. Let's go back up and talk about this. So as you can see, there's quite a bit you can do with this. One thing I wanted to say is that the so there's there's a quite a few ways of being able to do this now you can i would suggest that if you want to be able to edit the liquid soap files directly and modify them that you that go get go if you go to github uh savinet liquid soap i'll put a link below but if you go there you can get the book for free or if you want to support the project you can go out to amazon I'll put that link there too. It's 25 bucks for the uh, for the book. It is very comprehensive on all of the things that the underlying technology can do. Uh, but I will say this: as AzuraCast can do most of the things, um, with the exception of one. So when you get ready to hook this up to an outside server. Uh, You'll need you'll need to use a Zuracast to do that. And like I said, Linode has the ability to do one-click setups uh, for this, and so uh, as well as a number of others. So yeah, my intention is once I get this running, that's where mine will go, uh, and and then it will just be podcasts. There there will be no music on it. I will 
I will have it replay through. I'll let people pick them if they want, and uh, and then I will interrupt the show when I'm doing a live, and then start to broadcast that. That's my intention uh, on on how I intend to do this. So. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again real soon. Bye for now.